well, you can go as fast as you like, you know. Well, it's quite fantastic, as a matter of fact. I got up to 100 on the clock. Hello, and welcome to Auto Shenanigans. How the devil are you? My name is John, and thank you very much for joining me for a new series called Secrets of the Motorway. In this series, we'll be taking a look at some of the interesting facts and features that make up our motorway network, and maybe discover a few things along the way that you didn't know about. So be sure to hit that subscribe button because there's no way you're going to want to miss any of this. And in today's episode, we're taking a look at the M1 motorway. I'm at Staples Corner in North London where you'll find the M1 starting point or Junction 1. Have you noticed that if you approach Staples Corner on the M1 southbound, that the carriageway appears to go on for a short distance as if it wanted to carry on going? Well, it did, or at least that was the plan. As part of the London Ringways project, the intention was that the M1 would wiggle its way through North London before meeting Ringway 1 at West Hampstead. That never came to fruition and we're left with what we see today. So the plan today is to head north on the M1 and explore some of the interesting and hidden features that it has to offer. And not long after you leave Staples Corner, you'll arrive at this abandoned slip road. This small slip road used to join the M1 through to the A1 and the A41. And if you're looking at it thinking, it's a little bit small for a motorway junction, well, you'd be right. However, back in the 60s and 70s, traffic was significantly less than it is now, so it served the purpose just fine. Eventually, it was closed following the completion of the Staples Corner Junction a couple of miles down the road from here. However, it did see a temporary reopening in the early 90s following an IRA bomb attack at Staples Corner and Bren Cross, which shut the entire area down for weeks. This abandoned slip road really is a hidden gem, hiding in plain sight. You've got old central reservations, street lights and old walls and infrastructure to look at, so if this is your kind of thing, it's definitely worthwhile making the trip. It's a well-known fact that there's no Junction 3 on the M1. It certainly was planned, but it was never completed. What was to be called the Stirling Link would have seen a road go from the Gateway Services Junction through to the A1 at Stirling Corner. Whilst the main bulk of the junction was built, the surrounding link roads weren't. And so Junction 3 doesn't really exist. Nowadays, it's used to access the London Gateway services, but doesn't count as an official motorway junction. The idea of building the link roads and creating Junction 3 was revisited in the early 90s, but unfortunately never materialised. Had it been completed, it would have given you the option of leaving the M1 north. For you see, there's no northbound exit at Junction 4, so if you join the M1 northbound at Staples Corner, your first opportunity to exit is way up in Watford, Hertfordshire, at Junction 5. As we pass Junction 5, we begin driving on what can be considered as the OG M1. The M1 was built in stages, with the first being completed in 1959, and that section ran from Junction 5 up to Junction 18. So that makes this the oldest section of the M1. It's not really a motorway related item, however, keep an eye out on the left just as you pass Junction 8 for Hemel Hempstead and you'll spot the Buntsfield Depot, the site of an absolutely massive explosion and fuel fire back in 2005. It happened at 6am on a Sunday morning and fortunately nobody was injured. It really was a massive explosion, I recall being woken up at the time and I lived 10 miles from the site. Parts of the M1 were closed as well at the time because the smoke cloud was so large, visibility was, well, non-existent. As we continue north, between junctions 14 and 15, there's a rather odd junction that isn't a junction. If you were to use it, you'd find yourself coming off the motorway, going underneath and then joining it in the opposite direction on the other side. There's not much details as to why it's here, but we believe it's a turning point for the emergency services, which allows them a shorter journey time between junctions. Next up is the Misterton Depot, which can be found between junctions 19 and 20. Originally, it was intended to be a service station and would have been called Lutterworth Services. However, that never came to be, and these days is a highway maintenance depot. There's a rusty old railway bridge between junctions 20 and 21. You've probably driven past it and not even noticed. It used to be part of the Great Central Railway, with a line that linked Whetstone to Cosby. This line opened in 1899, but then closed in the 1960s. 
There's been talk to remove this bridge, but as it is, it's still here. A short while after Junction 23 and just before Junction 23A, keep an eye out for these ghost slip roads. Back when the M1 was first constructed, they actually planned the locations of the service stations. They bought the land and constructed the roads accordingly for where the service stations would be. However, this didn't always end up being the case. And this site is a great example of that, where they built the slip roads in preparation for a service station, but it never ended up being built. Had it been completed, it would have been called Long Watton Services. A short while up from there, between Junction 23 and 24, you'll see East Midlands Airport and the site of the 1989 Kegworth Air Disaster. An absolute tragic event in which a Boeing 737 crashed into the embankment on the northbound side of the M1, falling short of the runway. Unfortunately, 47 people lost their lives. However, there were more survivors than there were fatalities. Just off the M1 between Junction 26 and 27 near Hucknall is the site of the Watnall Brickworks and Colliery. This sort of stuff really interests me, but actually it serves no benefit to this film. I just couldn't resist a look. Construction of the site started in 1870, with coal extraction starting in 1875. It lasted until the 1950s before being shut down and abandoned. We've sent the drone up to have a look around, but from what I understand, most of it's been demolished. We're back on the M1 now, and keep an eye as you pass tip shelf services there's another set of ghost slip roads which like we've seen before were put in place for a service station we did get the service station it's tip shelf that we've just passed for some reason they decided to build it a few hundred meters down the road from where they originally intended oh, we sat at the last motorway junction for an hour absolute nightmare but we're here we're carrying on as the M1 arrives in Sheffield, you're carried across the Don Valley on the Tilsey Viaduct. This two-tier bridge was the first of its kind in the UK and opened in 1968. It's a little over a thousand metres in length and cost six million pounds to build. In 2006, a three-year bridge strengthening programme commenced at a cost of 82 million pounds. Wait a minute, six million to build, 82 million to make a few modifications? Um, all right, that's like 14 times the original cost. I don't understand how that's possible. After 10... Echo. After 10 hours of driving and filming on the M1, we've reached the end of our journey. However, there's one little thing I'd like to show you before we call it a day. Our final little secret that we'd like to share with you involves you coming off the M1 and heading over to Horbury near Wakefield. If you drive all the way down to the end of Green Lane, you'll find what's called the Underpass of Graffiti. This underpass sits between junctions 39 and 40 on the M1. However, of course, if you were traveling on the M1, you would never even know it's here. And there we are, guys. That brings us nicely to the end of today's episode. I hope you liked the video. If you did, there's a button specifically for that. And if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button as well for me, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Enjoy the rest of your week, whatever it is you get up to. My name's John. You've been watching Auto Shenanigans. And I shall see you guys next time for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorways. Until then, take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.